Now, the reason for uh, this presentation and the importance in discuss of discussing it is that uh, historically, uh, Chinese assistance has uh, often been linked to foreign nuclear weapons programs, whether successful or uh, potential. Now, this has raised a number of serious concerns for the international non-proliferation agenda and uh, nuclear stability at a worldwide level. Specifically, I'll be looking at the cases of Iran and Pakistan, as they are often highlighted as the most prominent beneficiary, uh, beneficiaries of Chinese assistance. Everything all right there? Um, However, towards the end, I'll also be mentioning how this has changed since, uh, China's, uh, since China began to advocate its adherence to the new security concept since the uh, mid-1990s, uh, where we've seen the potential for a more constructive and responsible China within uh, the non-proliferation field. Um, however, at the same time, there are numerous concerns which will be spoken about later that still need to be addressed. So Iran and China, the historical relationship between the two, that was believed to have started back in the, uh, the early 1980s with the foundation of the Islamic Republic. Uh, now, China is believed to, as you can see, have aided in a number of nuclear-related activities, which uh, includes the following, the uranium mining, providing technologies used for uranium enrichment and conversion, blueprints for production facilities, research reactors, as well as nuclear-related training. Uh, additionally, and importantly, it's been uh, claimed to have been involved with uh, advancing their ballistic missile uh, capability, which is considered to be one of the most advanced within the Middle East region. Uh, this is particularly concerning, as, uh, as I'm sure you've all read in the uh, last year's, in November last year, the IAEA report, which identified um, Iran's nuclear ballistic missile capability, specifically through the Shahab-3, as the most likely candidate for carrying out a nuclear-based strike. The consequences uh, for aiding uh, Iran's nuclear program uh, towards nuclear stability uh, have been seen really through the last few months. Um, we've seen hugely increased tension in the region, um, as well as internationally with, uh, with Europe and the US. Uh, initially, uh, obviously Israel, which, uh, as we no, is widely maintained, although not officially acknowledged as a nuclear state, and the U.S., with those not ruling out an initial use of force, although they eventually changed their minds on that, um, could have had dramatic consequences for nuclear stability in the region. Um, however, in, um, just the initial sort of tension that arose between countries within the region and internationally was enough to destabilize the region for a time and continues to do so. Additionally, um, since uh, the recent focus on terrorism, since 9-11, uh, there's serious concern about uh, Iran's capability um, and the link with terrorist groups, uh, including its relationship with uh, non-state activists such as Hezbollah. Uh, there are the increased fears that they could gain nuclear-related technologies either directly or indirectly through Iran having such capabilities, and as such, it is therefore possible to argue that Chinese assistance towards Iran could indeed aid in destabilizing uh, the, the region both inter and internationally as well. Pakistan, however, is uh, possibly the most, it's actually been maintained as the most extensive uh, relationship uh, with regards to nuclear-related proliferation between China and a foreign state. Its belief was started in the 1960s uh, China was supposed to have, uh, is believed to have been involved with it to counter Indian uh, dominance within the region, obviously India being uh, Pakistan's uh, traditional rival and uh, having shared uh, hostile relations with China in the past. Uh, they are believed to have provided uh, nuclear support to both safeguarded and unsafeguarded facilities in Pakistan, and it has been maintained by a number of reports, intelligence reports, um, that they actually greatly aided and advanced Pakistan's <laughs> nuclear weapons capability. Um, as, uh, as we've mentioned, uh, with this being a means of countering India, they perceive the Chinese assistance to Pakistan's nuclear and ballistic missile programs to constitute a direct threat to India's security. As such, we saw a huge uh, increase in tension and destabilization within the region uh, during the 1990s, which eventually culminated in the uh, Indo-Pakistani nuclear crisis of 1998, where both countries tested nuclear devices. Um, 
Additionally, going back to the idea of uh, the threat of terrorism, which is so uh, important during the past decade and continues to be, uh, there was the issue that Chinese designs for nuclear weapons, uh, which were traded to Pakistan, uh, were actually found to have been passed on to other states, including Libya, uh, by Pakistan's Ahu Khan network. This uh, thus raises further concerns uh, as to the potential for non-state activists and terrorist groups uh, to acquire nuclear-related technologies. However, since the 1990s, China has advocated a new security concept, which it states is the most able method to promote peace and stability internationally and regionally. Uh, and it is true that uh, since then we've seen a number of examples uh, that highlight China's aim to become at least perceived as a more responsible and, and constructive member of the international community. For instance, in 1992, it acceded to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Um, while it's not an official member of the missile technology control regime, although it has uh, sought for it on many occasions, and as far as I'm aware, continues to do so, it uh, agreed to abide by the uh, MTCR uh, at least very closely uh, in 1992 uh, with its own export controls list and mechanisms, and it also joined the Nuclear Suppliers Group in 2004. Um, it also agreed, uh, I believe, it produced a joint statement with Washington uh, to not to supply Iran and Pakistan's nuclear and ballistic missile programs, and it also, despite um, being one of the uh, factors in uh, establishing a successful uh, Pakistani nuclear capability, it did condemn the Indo-Pakistani tests in 1998 as well as uh, recently condemning Iran's pursuit of a nuclear weapons program. However, it should be mentioned that while these developments certainly do uh, illustrate a more <coughs> constructive and responsible uh, China uh, as a growing international player, uh, they, these developments have been instigated due to uh, Chinese contravention of, uh, of past agreements, and they continue um, to come under pressure from the international community for um, suspected uh, contravention uh, with their, their agreements and uh, at an international level. Uh, it is widely maintained that uh, China, therefore, still engages in nuclear-related cooperation with both, uh, both Iran and Pakistan, and uh, subsequently uh, numerous international sanctions, many from the U.S. and the EU, have been placed on Chinese entities suspected of nuclear-related uh, trading and assistance with foreign states. Um, namely the ones mentioned, Iran and Pakistan. Uh, this remains, uh, therefore, there remains significant concern uh, internationally as to China's actual uh, political commitment and approach to nuclear non-proliferation and arms controls. So, judging from recent developments and past activities on the part of China uh, within the non-proliferation field, it's possible to highlight a number of challenges and opportunities, uh, specifically taking on board what they've achieved since the new security concept, if we acknowledge and encourage their further development and involvement within the international community, it may be possible to, therefore, bring them under the control of further international norms and regulations and thus increase their perception of risk regarding the involvement of, non, uh, of nuclear-related trading with other countries. Uh, this is especially relevant as it is argued that China continues uh, or may continue its uh, nuclear-based relationships with Iran and Pakistan uh, for as long as it sees value in them. For instance, uh, it recently opposed the uh, sanctions against Iran um, due to, not only due to the fact that it shares a close historical relationship with Iran, but because China is dependent upon a lot of Iran's oil and trade supplies, um, and that in turn could affect China's domestic stability, which is widely regarded as one of the core principles to their new security concept. They, in all, the main worry for China is being able to secure a, a stable domestic and economic front. And so they will, in turn, do what they need to to secure that. Uh, furthermore, there are actual questions, there are more questions regarding China's actual capacity to observe and manage the acquisition and transfer of nuclear-related exports. Um, this, there's, there's the argument that um, due to private entities, they're, they're able to sometimes work around the knowledge of the Chinese state, um, often due to the increasingly 
murky nature of exports, where there'll be subcomponents and uh, dual-use technologies. Uh, additionally, one of the large uh, and important factors at, uh, at work here is Chinese suspicions of U.S. hegemony in nuclear uh, non-proliferation uh, efforts, which has long been uh, a characteristic of their relations with the U.S. and with the non-proliferation regime, and these will need to be addressed in order for international nuclear stability to uh, advance. Uh, therefore, uh, oh, it's also contended that uh, their involvement within the international uh, proliferation organizations, at least initially, um, is a means to counter the, the U.S. dominance within those fields. By taking part in these organizations, it allows them to express their own interests and to further advance that, while also arguing against uh, U.S. interests and working to uh, counter that in a more subtle nature uh, without being openly aggressive. So to conclude, um, it is, as, as I've discussed, it's, it's clear that China has for uh, many years uh, affected the status of international nuclear stability um, through the examples of aiding uh, Pakistan's nuclear weapons program, which uh, subsequently increased tensions in South Asia, leading to the Indo-Pakistani nuclear test in 98, uh, and also through the direct uh, involvement in developing Iran's nuclear program, uh, which obviously is of great controversy uh, currently and continues to affect uh, regional stability, especially with, uh, with Israel and other countries such as Saudi Arabia. Uh, Chinese support of uh, such foreign uh, nuclear programs uh, is also regarded as a risk with concerns to terrorists acquiring nuclear-related material, especially uh, over the past decade, where this has become a, a prime concern of the international community. Uh, further concerns uh, remain present regarding China's commitment to the, uh, the international non-proliferation agenda, uh, specifically with their perceptions of value and risk, and so that will need to be uh, addressed in order to promote a, uh, a more willing and constructive China within the international non-proliferation agenda. And uh, this may be countered by increasing China's participation in and subsequent adherence to the inter uh, international community, including our norms and regulations. Uh, nevertheless, it is important to note that they, uh, they have made significant developments under the new security uh, concept and that uh, it is possible to predict, uh, if they continue along the same path, a more constructive and responsible China within the uh, international non-proliferation regime. I believe that's it.